going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If y'all are new here, my name is Daniel. This is the Cedar Ridge Chronicles. I welcome y'all. Today, I've got a really cool video lined up for y'all, so y'all stay tuned. All right, now, I have had a buck brought to me that was killed back during the Tennessee velvet hunt. Early, early season hunt back in August. The deer's got a beautiful cape on him, super thin, uh, summer cape, really cool looking deer. Just a few little minor problems. Now, little backstory. This hunter has never caped a deer out before off the head. He has caped a deer for a mount, but not off the head. So he called me, he's a good friend of mine, called me, asked what he needed to do. There wasn't any local taxidermists fairly close to where he was at. So I told him, I said, just cut the thing off, just go for it. You know, if something happens, I'll fix it, but you can't learn if you never try. And I'm okay with somebody messing up once. <laughs> so I sent him some videos, kind of what to look out for. He got a little bit aggressive, but you're also dealing with a super, super thin cape. So this was really worst case scenario of a hide to learn on, but he did a reasonably good job considering he'd never done it before. But there are some issues that we're going to have to fix. And I've had several people request that I do more videos where I've just got basically a disaster to work with and show how I go about fixing the thing. And this is one of those disasters. So let me show y'all what we've got. Now, this buck has got some severe ear damage from ticks. There were ticks all over his ears. Both ears were just as bad. It's badly infected. Y'all can see the infection all along the ends of those ears. The insides were each slap up as well. I mean, just they're just in horrible shape. And then here on the top, he cut this a little bit. I believe this is supposed to go like, like that against this skin here. I have to stitch that back up. He also split the cape completely down the back, which is a little bit different than I would have done it, but that also can be fixed. Now, here's the kicker. The bottom jaw, he got just a little bit, <laughs> a little bit aggressive on. This is what is left of it. Get this flipped over here so y'all can see. That's the bottom jaw, move the top out of the way. There we go, just like that. Now, most folks would say that cave's destroyed, need another cape. But this is, I'm not gonna say a one in a kind, but you're not gonna find another cape like this. I mean, y'all see summer, that good summer coat on it. It also doesn't have any bald spots. It's not missing hair. I mean, it's in great shape. Super, super thin. I mean, just a very unique, cape so you're not going to be able to replace it so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put this back together like a jigsaw puzzle we're going to have to stitch it back up and then we're going to have to go back after it dries and try to do some kind of flocking or epoxy or something and try to hide a few of those stitches and paint it to where you can't really notice it now something else i want to show y'all today Little bit of a sneak peek, cause this is probably gonna show up in this video a little bit anyway. I was kinda wanting to surprise everybody. But y'all check this out. This right here is a homemade turntable. It's a mounting stand, holds eight shoulder mounts at one time. The top hub itself is about five foot wide. That was given to me by a man named Mitchell over in East Alabama. Uh, he used to be a taxidermist, kind of getting out of it a little bit. But his son built that homemade from scratch for him to use about 15 or 20 years ago. He's one of my subscribers, and he saw one of my videos where I was asking about a fleshing machine and saying I wish that I had one and wanted to buy one. And he contacted me and said that he had an old one that he was not using. He'd only used it once or twice and didn't really like it. And he fleshes with a knife like I do. He did not enjoy using a flesh machine at all, so he pretty much stuck it in the closet. It's been sitting there for 15 years, and he wanted to know if I wanted to have it for free now. And I was like, man, that is unbelievable. So me and Christy loaded up last weekend, went and picked this stuff up, 
And I'm really looking forward to making a video of me trying to use it because I've never used one before and it's going to make quite the interesting content. <laughs> Let me show you all the fleshing machine. It's made by Authentic Supply Company. The company went out of business uh, years ago, but it's a tabletop, portable model. It's not super heavy aside from the motor. I've got to put another plate on top of the plug. And uh, from what I've read on this thing, it gets pretty much horrible reviews because the motor is up here with you. You kind of have to reach over it. Plus you're dealing with some electrical up here with some water, uh, you know, not your best case scenario, but it is a fleshing machine. It is free. And I promise you right now that it's going to be better than having to thin with a number 11 hobby knife blade. So considering that I don't know any better and I've never used any kind of other fleshing machine, that right there for me is the cream of the crop. So any comments y'all have about how horrible this flesh machine is, keep them to yourself because that was a gift and I look at it like gold. I cannot wait to try it out and use it. But anyway, that will be for another video once I load that up. So let's get back to this deer cake. All right, we've seen the bottom jaw. The only thing left are the eyes. He actually did a reasonably good job on the eyes. He left me enough eye skin. There are a few holes here or there. Uh, this eye is torn up pretty badly here. Up there in the corner, uh, tear ducts tore up in pretty bad, but there again, if you want a video on how to repair something that's destroyed, this will make a great video. <laughs> so we're gonna swap cameras over and we're gonna start doing some stitching. All right, we're gonna start out thinning some of these areas that we're gonna have to stitch up. Make sure that it doesn't have any excess hide. Make sure that everything's thin enough where we can stitch it together and it won't show up quite as bad. Most of this is very thin anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. Hope y'all enjoyed the music that I put on the uh, video where I mounted my brother's buck. I know y'all are getting sick and tired of hearing that same old guitar riff that I made for some of my first videos. I had to do something. That was the first time I'd actually taken the time to look up any uncopyrighted music on YouTube. It's there for people to use. I'm just very limited on time when it comes to making content, so I had not had a chance to really sit down and and find some music that I liked, okay? Really gotta go through some of those tracks. Some of them are horrible. But at least that'll mix it up just a little bit. <clears throat> and right now, we really don't even know how this thing's supposed to go back together. It's got so many tears in it. But I think if we get the edges thin enough, we know the edges have to go back together somewhere. So if we can get the edges thin enough, I think we can build a deer mount.
thin down these eyes a little bit. We'll make something something we can work with here. I'd say I was going to be careful and try not to cut any holes in it, but hey, what's another hole at this point, right? We're going to do some repairs. We might as well do some repairs. Of this entirely is going to have to be rebuilt. This side over here is going to be the tough one. This is where the eyelashes are at. So the eyelid is actually what is torn open here. We're going to play a little bit of trouble trying to get that line back up. But we're going to call it a learning opportunity. So that old Bob Ross said, happy mistakes. laugh to keep from crying <laughs> oh boy yeah see there so this is his eyelid that I'm actually dealing with right here That's going to get, get these nostrils thinned out a little bit. Kind of split the end of them. Get rid of any cartilage that's left over. See what I did there. See how much thinner that nostril is now, and how that one's just thick and balled up. Keep it from laying flat on that form. So, I like to get in here before I mount it and just smooth that out a little bit. It's a lot easier to do it right now than it is while you're turning the head when it's when the flesh is still green. You go to turn the lips and nose and all. Some of this is a little bit easier done after they're tanned.
Okay. Just got us a nose. When the arrow went in, I'll tell you one cool thing about this buck. My buddy that shot this thing, it was shot during the velvet hunt in Tennessee, and he shot it with a recurve, which was also very unique, although now he's killed several with a recurve. Um, still a pretty awesome feat for anybody, really. But to get one in velvet, with a recurve is really cool. Matter of fact, I don't think I really showed y'all, but the rack that is hanging on my turntable over there that is in velvet, that's the deer that's going on this mount. Or the rack, rather. I did have to do artificial velvet on that the way that I prefer to do them. Uh, I didn't film myself doing this one, but if y'all would like to see how I did it, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description of another video that I made of how to use a Static King to make artificial velvet. Really cool device that only takes just a minute. Okie dokie. Now then. There's one little spot right here. And I'm going to try to put some of this back together. Do this without making more of a problem. There we go. Don't know when y'all be watching this video, but last night was the Super Bowl. Me and Christy watched it. We was kind of wanting Eagles to win, we like old Jalen Hurts, but still a really good game to watch. Don't know what y'all thought about the outcome. If y'all were able to take the time to watch it, That's as good as she gonna get. We'll get some needle and thread. See if we can't make a deer out of this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna be using some very small split pieces of sinew thread. You can use fire line here if you want. You can use dental floss. Works really well, especially around the white areas. Uh, I always use this because I like working with it and I have got plenty of it. But the preference is entirely up to you. So what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to try to, let's stitch the edges up first and see if we can get this thing back into some kind of a shape. And then we'll go and stitch up the holes in the center of it. 
think we're going to need to put that together here and this together here. Somehow. <laughs> Guess we'll find out in a second. All right. That right there needs to be a hair thinner. Right there. Yeah, I'm gonna skip around a little bit on this stitching because I know that y'all don't wanna sit here and watch me do every single little stitch of this. So if there's a little place missing in me putting this together, that's why. I wanna teach y'all and give y'all ideas, but I also don't wanna bore you half to death. Some of this stuff is more tedious than it is interesting. in my way right now. may or may not have seen me use tape on my finger like this before. I haven't actually cut myself. What I do is use that to put my needle on when I'm stitching. 
I can press that tape right there and it doesn't go through my finger. It doesn't make a big old sore on there. Especially if you're doing several deer in a day or doing a whole lot of stitching, that really does help save your knuckle. It's way worse too once your finger gets wet. It'll tear you to pieces. Also, in case y'all were wondering why tax drum is charged so much, for those of y'all who are hunters and not taxidermists, it's because of days like this. Usually, this started with the conversation of just cut it, my taxidermist can fix it. And that's true, but it's going to cost you. You know, on one hand, it's a little bit aggravating knowing that you could already have the deer mounted up by the time you get all this stuff done. But at the same time, I do like the challenge of seeing if I'm able to fix something. You know, when you see something kind of unique like this, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, man, I could make that work, but you just don't know until you try it. And I, I kind of enjoy that part of this too. <laughs> it's kind of like my own personal challenge against myself to see what I'm capable of. All right, now we've got this hole here. I'm just gonna get rid of it completely. And we're just going to stitch that together. something like this you'll see I got this piece of wood right here under where I'm stitching It'd be a little bit easier if I threw a two by six or a piece of plywood or something under here just so it'll be rolling around but it lets you stick your needle into it without dulling your needle especially if you're working on a metal table like this Hopefully that won't go anywhere. Okay, now to bring that back down and replace the edge of the mouth there. Smooth that up a little bit. Put some stitches in that.
beginning to get the bottom jaw back. Work on these holes right here and see if we can fix that up a little bit. When y'all go to stitch these holes up too, make sure that the edges are as even as possible. Like right there where you get this jagged edge, it doesn't really meet up where it's taking some of the skin. The under layer right there, that just cut some of that off. And get it smooth. Get this other side smooth. And that's just gonna go together way better. It'll be easier to stitch and it's gonna get you, get you a better final result. down a little more there. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Right there will make you want to punch somebody in the face. simple lock knot and then a couple of overhand knots. It don't really take a whole lot to hold this in place, especially once you get the stitches in. That skin pulls together so tight on those stitches that it, it holds everything in place very well anyway. You don't have to have any kind of super complicated knot. sitting here doing this tedious mess how many y'all out there are turkey hunters spring will be here in just a second and I know that there's some folks watching this that are ready to go and try to chase a turkey I know I am it's one of my favorite things to do all year long I hope y'all like watching turkey content too because I'll be filming something maybe we had a few good hunts last year. I think I've got, I think I've got three videos on here from last year uh, where we got some turkeys. Or four, I actually have four videos, I believe. Y'all go check those out. You'll see those videos from last year. Always a good time. A little bit deep there, let's try this little shelter. All right, on to the gigantic hole. I think I am going to get me a two by four for this one. If you're trying to figure out how to put this stuff back together too, a lot of times when you first get started, you have a tendency to look at this like a hole. You see it and it looks like this. It just looks like a hole. Uh, you got this big flap, which you know still looks like a hole because this, this cape stretches so much. You see how that just doesn't seem to make sense. It doesn't match up. But what this was, when he was caping this off his head, the knife made a cut straight through there and it peeled it off you know in a flap so this is actually one cut it's got to be taken back together like that right there so if you can kind of imagine that and how it got sliced then every once in a while it'll help your brain kind of figure out how to put it back together but you also this right here has been stretched out more than this from being salted so you can stretch this a little bit with your hand get a little bit more shape out of it and it'll help that fall back into place a little bit better. Well, I guess we're gonna start on one end and work our way to the other. Mm -hmm. 
you stitches like this too along the face, keep your stitches really close together. A lot closer together than you would when you're doing your seam on the back of the neck. It's gonna help the skin to lay a little bit flatter. And it'll also allow you to put your holes with your needle a little bit closer to the edge. When you do that, you're gonna have less of a, a wrinkle when you pull your stitches tight. But the skin is so thin that when you get close to the edge, it's very easy to pull your stitches loose and tear that leather. But if you'll put your stitching really close together, it'll make it a little bit stronger across the length of the stitch and you'll be able to get away with stitching closer to that edge.
Okay, now, looks like we're trying to weave a wicker basket. But I think all of our holes are patched. Cut a few of these ends off a little bit shorter here so we can see what we're working with. Turn the head back right side out. There we go. Get my wire brush here. You see the same, looks like a baseball. <laughs> it is a baseball stitch, but back brush that just a little bit get any kind of hair out of that seam that's stuck and by no means is this going to be perfect but we have managed to use the same cape which in this case is kind of incredible so we'll see how that looks. I mean, we've got the bottom jaw back, so it can be used to make a deer mount. What we'll have to do on this right here, when we go back after it's mounted, we'll just have to go back there and maybe airbrush that. I think airbrushing that might hide the majority of that anyway. But we'll see, we'll come up with something. So we've got the jaw stitched up. Now I've got the brisket, some holes that were cut in the brisket stitched up, and the seam coming up the back. You can see it coming all the way up to where I normally would have the V cut. And it's stitched all the way down the back there. So that we have a tube cape now, good solid cape. Brisket turned out really good. Looks nice. Seam on the back, you're gonna be able to see a little bit because the hair on here is so short. It's got a few extra cuts in there. I won't have to color, but it's not gonna be too terribly bad. That's what we're left with now. It's just the regular opening in the back of the head. A few splits and cuts here or there, but we'll work that out as we go. So now what we're gonna do, we'll work on these ears. Um, you can see the damage. I mean, those ticks absolutely tore this up. It's one bad thing about these deer in the summertime is they are just covered. And there's so much infection, scarring from, I guess just from the poison of them ticks. <clears throat> Sometimes you'll see that right around the tick bite it makes these little bumps it gets bubbled up but y'all i bet there were 20 or 30 of them right along the edges of these ears it was bad i'm gonna use some air liners and uh put them in there and see if we can't patch this up a little bit with some dryer sheets and glue first get some air liners in there and uh maybe get a good solid ear back <laughs> give us something that we can you know, maybe fill in a little bit later and dress up once everything is dry. Now this will no doubt be the worst damage that I've ever had to tackle on some ears, but I believe that we can get a solid ear back out of this somehow. Okay. So we just need this to sort of fit back together. All right. Get me a piece of this shaped about like the end of that ear.
up just a little bit. It's not attached to the other side of that ear, so that's a good thing. Hold it out just a little bit, let that glue dry so it doesn't stick the two sides together. get the ears turned without making a bunch of holes, then you could use Bondo rather than trying to pop loose cartilage from all that scar tissue. It's really hard to do.
All right, now what those dryer sheets are gonna do, they're gonna hold all of this together until we can get an ear liner in there. And then once the deer is dry, we can go back in these little imperfections right here. And what I like to do is take some Pro One hide paste and put in these little holes right here and smooth it over. And it almost works like epoxy, uh, except it, it dries nearly completely clear, but it levels that out right there. And it does it without causing any kind of an edge or a texture. And usually you can paint right over it and you can't even tell that it's even there. Well, let's get our ear liners and get them in here. Might be able to mount this deer up sometime today. Now, these ears are very small. I'm gonna trim these ear liners down. I make that match best I can. close right there. Let's see that airliner's poking through a little bit right there, but we'll glue that up, that'll hold all that in place. We can flock the edge and paint it. It'll look just right. Okay, yeah, that's not gonna be terrible. I just need to cut the other one about the same size. that airliner from getting caught on all of the patches and glue. Try to work it up in there without tearing everything back up. All right. Yeah, that's going to work just fine. Y'all can see, I mean, it's pretty ugly up in there. But this is going to hold it all together. Make it rigid, make it solid. We'll be able to go back and do some patchwork, a little bit of paintwork. That'll make it look pretty good.
Now then, ugly ears back in place. All right, guys, I finally got this thing put together. Let's take a look at it. Not too horrible for what we started out with. Pretty cool deer. See the stitches there. Stitches here. Of course, the ears, you know, are pretty bad shape. Where the eye was torn here and up here. I'll have to do some patching up once it's dry. Of course, on that ear there too. But all in all, <laughs> made for a pretty cool looking mount. Y'all can see why we wanted to save that cape right there. I mean, you're just not gonna find too many capes that are summertime capes that are that thin. I mean, look at that right there, how thin that is. <laughs> and it's still wet. Once it dries up, it's gonna look really awesome. Now what I'm probably gonna do, guys, if I can remember to, when I come back and do the finish work on this deer, I'll try to make another video if I can remember to do it and show y'all how I'm gonna hide some of those stitches and seams and uh, what we can come up with to make that thing look really good once it's done. So anyway, appreciate y'all watching. If y'all hadn't already, y'all hit that subscribe button to help me get paid. Appreciate y'all's support. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see y'all in the next video.